this would have saved me years and years of time wasting and you're probably in that position right now you're learning how to code and you could be saving a lot more hours you could be saving a lot more months a lot more years if only you spend the next 10 minutes of watching this video my name is Ebenezer Don. I'm a software engineer and founder of NewDev.io, a learning platform for developers and a platform where you can connect with the best minds. But I made a lot of mistakes when I got started with programming. And if I were to start all over today, the first question I'll be asking myself is, how can I connect with other developers? Are there groups, are there communities I can join? Are there other people I can find, even if not physically around me? online how can i just be in the midst of other developers because there are a lot of opportunities information that's going to pass you by if you're alone you can be a lone wolf in this industry you cannot survive as a lone wolf so you have to first of all think about how you can connect with other developers what platform can i use to reach out with other developers there's new dev there's linkedin there's twitter you know how can i just connect be in the midst of other developers physically or online that's the first thing you should think about then what do I even want to develop? Why do I want to develop? Why am I doing this? Is it because my friend is doing it? Um, is it because they say tech is the new oil? Uh, is it because I hear that there's money there? Is it because I want to build something? Why exactly are you doing this? You have to be sure about why you're doing it for you to proceed. So why are you doing it? If you don't have a particular reason or a specific um, reason, then it'll be easy for you to get discouraged on the way because it, it, it's going to be pointless. At the point, you, you get discouraged um, several times, you get overwhelmed and you're going to wonder, why am I even doing this? I, I can just do something else that these other people are doing. Oh, there's money in this other place, I can just do it. So there has to be a reason you're doing it. Think about the reason. It can be another person's reason. It's a reason, a reason known to only you, a reason for only yourself, you know, specific to you. But why exactly are you doing this? You know, have that why in your mind and that's going to help you that's going to keep you motivated when you face difficult times when you face challenges uh, when you get discouraged or overwhelmed you know the reason you started with um is going to help you a lot so why are you doing this now if you know why you're doing this you're going to know what exactly you want to do because you can't just say i want to do programming programming is really broad there's front-end development there's back-end development inside of front-end development you know you have web development or front-end for other platforms um you have like several programming languages for front-end development um you have back-end development you have um full stack you have android development you have ios development you have desktop application development you have OS operating system development, you have game development. So what exactly inside of programming do you want to do? Don't just have the idea that I'm just going to program. I want to do programming. What exactly do you want to do in programming? These are some of the things I did not think about from the start. I just wanted to code. I just wanted to build stuff. I wanted to do programming, but I did not ask myself what aspect of programming do I want to focus on? You have to have that in mind from the start. Even if maybe you want to focus on more than one aspect later on, but what do you want to start with? What is that thing you want to build in this particular aspect? So front-end programming, front-end development. If you hear front-end developers, that simply means um, the aspect of websites you can see. So if you go to a website, for example, um, twitter.com, you can see the buttons on Twitter. You can see the tweets. Um, you can see the interactions. You can see people's pictures and all of that. So that's the front end. But the things that enable the front end to work properly, the things that supply um, data to the front end so that you can actually see tweets. You know, if, if there, were, there was no tweet data that someone tweeted somewhere else, maybe in um, USA, London, in some other part of the world, Nigeria, um, Asia and all the rest, you can actually see it in your own phone. So what enables you to see all of that data, what enables the front end to function properly, that's the back end. So the back end, you don't really get to see it when interacting with the user interface, the UI, the front end. Um, but there's front end development, there's back end development, there's full stack. Full stack means, oh, I can do front end, I can do back end also, and I do both of them at a time in this project. So for this project, I'm a full stack developer of this company, so that's full stack. And then we have um, desktop application development. So the applications you can see on your laptop right now you can open chrome on your laptop that's desktop application development or you can open internet explorer if you're using internet explorer are you using internet explorer so there's internet explorer um they're like all those other applications you can use in your laptop there's desktop application development 
but we also have a mobile application development you open your laptop and then you can see that you go to you can go to twitter.com on your browser and that's the twitter on the browser the twitter website and you can open your twitter application that's android development you can open um tiktok on your phone that's Android development. So those applications, that's Android. What of iOS? So there are people who do specifically for Android. There are also people who do specific, specifically, specifically, specifically for iOS. And there are people who do both, who do for Android and iOS. And there are also languages that allow people to develop both. But in um, big companies, you'll find out that they, there are specific languages they'll use for Android development and there are other languages you use for iOS development. So you have to think about it. What exactly do I want to focus on? What language do I want to learn that will enable me to do either web development, either Android development, desktop development, iOS development. Um, iOS is for Apple, iPhone, and all the rest. And we have game development. So game development is a whole other field um you want to get started with programming right now right now right now you want to do game development well it depends on your sit the situation around you i've not seen a lot of people that started with game development um but i've seen people who started with other aspects of programming and then went to game development um but there's also game development you can get started with game development right now if you want you know don't let anything discourage you so is that what you want to do you want to build games for android phones again Game development is also broad. Do you want to build games for desktop devices? Do you want to build games for iOS devices? Do you want to build games for web applications? You know, you can go to websites these days and play games in your browser. So what are the type of games you want to build? So this is a whole other field that's also diverse. So that is why you have to be specific about what aspect of programming you want to do. It's going to make the journey a whole easier. I see so many people every day they don't have any idea what they want to learn. They just know they want to code. They want to do tech. And today they are learning one language that's for iOS. Tomorrow they're learning the one for Android. Next month they're learning the one for the web. And they never get anywhere. They don't move forward that way. So you have to be specific from the beginning so that you stay focused. You get um, information. Maybe you want to do Android development. You get good, really skilled at Android development, you get a job and you start earning right away instead of trying to learn everything without any specific goal and you find yourself staying the same level for so many years. So specific and get a job um, at that particular skill set that you were specific about. Then, then you can diversify if you want. It's still fine if you want to learn other things, but focus on getting good at something. First of all, you know, and maybe ending from it before you start saying you want to learn so many other things again. So that's one thing. Now, another question that so many people ask me is, is it too late to get started with software development, with programming right now? I'm, I'm 30 years old. I'm 25. I'm, I'm 40 years old. Is it too late? It's never too late. Well, maybe if, if you're 80, 90 and can't really type or, you know, spend all that time reading and learning stuff, maybe if you're 100 but as long as you can take your hands you can type on the keyboard um you, you can see what you're typing you're good as long as you can do that you're good it's never too late to get started oh what of companies would they will they hire me yeah companies hire people of every demographic and by the way whatever demographic you are has its own advantage if you're a young person, you have your own advantage and as well as disadvantage as disadvantages when it comes to hiring. If you're a male, you have advantages too. As well as disadvantages when it comes to hiring. Same thing for females. Females have advantages and disadvantages. You know, the advantages and disadvantages for males and females are not the same. But it just depends. The advantages, their disadvantages. Instead of complaining, look out for the advantages and use them. So companies will hire you no matter your age range. I mean as, as long as you're not like 80, but then the most times the people that are asking are in the range of 30, 40, asking if it's too late to start learning to code and no, it's not too late. Now, what programming languages to learn first? Uh, that depends on what area of programming you chose in the first place. Is it front-end development? I would advise JavaScript um, as a programming language to learn first. But before you learn JavaScript, you want to do front-end, you have to learn HTML, you have to learn CSS. You start learning HTML today and you'll be building websites by tomorrow. You know, they're not going to look good 
they're gonna look terrible for you building websites anyway you'll be able to write stuff on the web hello world hello this is my website and all that you know they're not gonna look good but you'll see the result of what you're doing immediately and that's one really cool thing about html you just start html right now you're gonna get results then there's also css there's also javascript for front end that's what i advise you to learn don't make the mistake don't fall into the trap of learning several languages at a time you're learning javascript today and if friend comes and tells you ah nobody's getting the job in javascript though you have to learn something like python and immediately you're on python and while you're learning python someone tells you it's php it's php now that's the reigning one and you leave python you're in php and then you hear of golag you hear of rust you won't move forward that way so stick with a language so you want to start right get started with one decide that this is the language i want to learn and then get good at it Remember, you don't have to stay with it for life. The important thing is that you use that language to learn programming, you know, and then you can decide to learn whatever you want to learn. But get good at something first before diversifying. Very important, something I did not know, something that would have saved me years and years of struggling. I'm giving you this information for free. Should I make this video free? I'll think about it. Also, you gotta learn to not skip the fundamentals. Very important. Don't skip the fundamentals. It's because you don't have any learning plan that you'll be skipping fundamentals. You're always in a hurry. You're rushing. Yes, you in particular. Because you're always rushing. You're always rushing. You find out that you're skipping the fundamentals. And when you skip the fundamentals, they will haunt you for the rest of your career until you sit down and learn them. Don't skip the fundamentals. Please, I beg you. Don't skip the fundamentals. I'm serious. And once you get good, you know, once you've been able to learn, you've been able to build, you know, use the knowledge you have to build actual projects that work, you know, that involves all the concepts you've learned. Don't wait for jobs to come by. I was speaking with someone um, a while ago who was asking me, how I can't get a job. How can I get a job? How can I get a job? And I said, what do you mean by how can you get a job? And I was complaining that he's not getting any job. There's no job. Okay, what have you done? What of your CV? Huh? There's no CV. Have you applied for any job? Uh, it's not applied. How do you want to get a job? Uh, I thought job will come. <laughs> job will not come. You have to step out and look for the job. You have to go and get the job. Job is not going to come to you. Stop looking for Godfather that will come and be giving you a job. You, know, you have to step up. Once you've learned, you know, once you can build with your knowledge, work on your CV, you know, add your projects to it, work on your portfolio, and then go and go to job sites and start applying this. LinkedIn, you know, go to LinkedIn jobs, apply, remote OK, remote.io, you know, search for jobs in several places. I'm probably going to do a video later on on job sites uh, where you can apply for jobs. but. You have to go out and apply. Don't wait for jobs to come to you. Go to them. So do me a favor and hit the like button right now, the subscribe button. You gotta subscribe so I keep creating videos like this. If not, I'll feel like no one is watching them. Aren't you watching them? And then share with me in the comment. You gotta also share with me in the comment section so I know that you can hear me and you learn something. Tell me what you learned. Um, and go join New Dev right now, my developer community, and start learning how to code with the right community and the right developers. See you in my next video. This one, watch this one, and then watch this one, and look.